As I mentioned, my sermon will I be entitled, A Broad Highway Magically Appeared. I believe uh, a child of God will need this to be instructed, to be told that God all the time, not just, you know, uh, when He feels like or when He hates you, He does not. It is every single day, always, all the time, when we face situations, when we are in an experience, when we feel like we are beyond our strength, when we thought of there are no solutions in our situations, God will come right away, just, just one single call, just one single request. He comes and shows up. And you know what? Ladies and gentlemen, He comes and He helps us. Amen? We know all of this. I'd like us to look to the next person beside you and say, we know all of it. Come on. But you know what is our problem? The Word of God is something which is to be put or executed into an action not only as of something coming out only from our mental faculty. The Word of God can only be, uh, you know, discharged powerfully, not, not through head knowledge. They only can, or rather the Word of God can only come, or rather can only be released powerfully through our faith. Everybody says the word faith. faith. That is why we need to be reminded. It's not that we are sick. It's not that uh, we have senility or Alzheimer. It is that we just need the Word of God every day. And I just feel like maybe the Lord is sending me this morning to remind us, to lead us. That you know, brothers and sisters, indeed, God makes a way. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. <laughs> I'd like us to look to the next person beside you and tell him, God is about to bless you even more. Come on. We often ask, why God loves to bring us into a harder situation? Huh? Really? <laughs> and something, you know, when we are already on the heat of the battle, we kind of like feel, Lord, can we have a compromise? Can it be that, Lord, will it just be all sweet times and sweet moments and all blessings? and all good things and uh, good times as I follow that serve you. But it's not that, amen? I'd like to lead you, ladies and gentlemen, back to the passage that we read a while ago. Well, for the couple, the newlywed, in the story, the husband and wife, they were very happy. They didn't know what was happening around. But for the parents, and for the governor of the wedding, or rather for the steward that was taking in charge for the wedding. You know, the scripture that we read a while ago spoke about the miracle Jesus did on that wedding was yet the first in his appearance then as the, as the Messiah right after his water baptism, if, if you know the chronology. Uh, and he was led by, by God into the wilderness and to be tempted. And in 40 days he was filled with the power of God and he was now coming speaking the word and then Jesus first engagement was an invitation of a wedding everybody say wedding and he was together with his family I believe Joseph was around the siblings of Jesus but you know in the story the mother of Jesus was there and the twelve of course the apostles and little did uh, you know the couple know they were blind, totally blind about it. They were there, you know, in the presidential ta table. They were enjoying each other and, you know, uh, all of their guests around. They didn't know what was happening actually outside. Because there was this problem, a crisis, something if we can call. Because wine was now running out. Food were a plenty. There were still, you know, much and surplus of, you know, solid the meals, I mean for the feast, the wedding feast. But voila, it really was a, such a problem. Indeed, with such, with such a crisis. Because the wine was running out. And we're talking here about the New Testament. Or rather, uh, you know, the, the custom of the Israelites. Where wine is very important. 
It was to be an embarrassment. You just imagine. See, see them, you know, in your mind. In your imagination. How were the father and, and the mother now worried for their son? They thinking about this going to be an embarrassment to our family. This will reflect, you know, our capacity as husband and wife. You know, the problem was not that they didn't have money. Uh, I believe because this wedding, you know, had a good invitation and a good uh, and a good guest. I would presume it's safe, perhaps, perhaps to uh, to believe that you know the couple came from a uh, what is this? A well well-to-do family. Money was not the problem. It was just that somehow the wine ran out. Are you with me, man? Do you know what I'm saying? That there are situations in our lives where it seems things are beyond our control. Can somebody say beyond our control? Yeah. That doesn't mean you do not have the money, sometimes perhaps. <laughs> you do not have the, the abilities or you do not have the logistics or the people. God, you know, just sometimes uh, loves to bring us into hard situations where we are laid helpless, where we are rendered powerless, not because He wanted to make fun of us or God wanted to make some satiric things in our, into our lives. No, it's not that. I would like to uh, explain further as we will go on what then are the eternal plans of God. Because all He wanted was to strengthen more our inner man than the physical. Amen? To some extent, sometimes our flesh would have to die. Our carnality, our ego, our pride would have to perish for the new life of Christ that is in us, you know, to be increasing. Are you with me? Amen? Amen. And the woman, or rather, the mother of Jesus, because that is how Jesus addressed the mother, was a little worried also and approached Jesus. They do not have wine. Can you do something? And Jesus replied, who am I? But the Bible said it was not yet the time of the master. You see, every miracle that comes along our way has a timing. Hello, are you with me, amen? I would like you to realize, ladies and gentlemen, you and I are men and women of miracles. Huh? Hello, are you there? Amen. Then every step of the way into our lives are being clocked by God. Clocked that in every experience we have, it can be sometimes minute miracles, or a few times they also are gigantic. But that do not matter whether small or gigantic or great or big. All of them are manifestations of the workings of God into our lives. We call them literally miracles. Amen? Can you can we give the Lord a clap of praise? They happen according to God's timing. And the time had come. Jesus went to the kitchen and talked to the servants. God would like, Jesus would like all the time to talk to servants. Do we have servant attitude? Amen? Amen. He doesn't go to the masters, to the servants. Show me the water jars. What the jars here are used uh, to clean as rituals, you know, to Jewish families to wash the feet of, uh, of the guests. Because, you know, this, this, uh, the time in history where there are no cars yet, People would have to travel either by camels or uh, by foot. And this is the Middle East, you know, think about the dirt and the dust. So before a guest can enter into his, uh, I mean, to the family who invited him, you know, it's something which is formal, part of the custom, their feet needs, or their feet need to be washed. So they, these were the jars. But those jars, you know, were containing clean waters. You know the story, Jesus turned, you know, the plain water into a uh, high grade of wine. And the, and the, the master, the steward of the, of the feast knew about what had happened. He really was very happy. You know, an emotional person, I can just see that in my imagination. Maybe the steward cried so much upon knowing the miracles. Because when you can experience the miracles of God, emotions will really be very high. You either can cry or can laugh. Are you with me? Amen? Amen? But either way, when you laugh, you are happy. Praise God. When you cry, you cry with tears of joy. Amen? Amen. Can we give the Lord a cup of praise? Come on. And also the parents. And the governor that was 
was invited, made some remarks. What you kind of people? You are different. You are exceptional. It's, you know, uh, a knowledge to everyone that the Jewish people offer always the first, the best. I mean, talking about wine that, you know, when everyone gets to be spirited already, the inferior is being released for something, for, uh, for something, reasons of uh, economy. But you're different. You gave us first the lesser valuable wine, inferior wine. And later when we become full and a little spirited, you know, this is the Old Testament. You are giving us instead the better wine. That's how the Lord always performs. He gives always the best of the later. Amen? Amen? I tell you the graces you may be enjoying today. I mean, the promotions you are relishing today. Uh, what maybe are those good things the Lord are giving to you now? They are not yet the real things. Some greater things, some better things, some more glorious are yet to come now and in the coming days. Amen? Amen. Because we are serving a God. We're serving the God who created the heavens and the earth, who always brings us into a progression. Amen? Amen. Can we give the Lord a clap of praise? <laughs> I would like to give us two reasons. You, 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 found, you found the glory of God in the story? Huh? When uh, the wedding was... On a need, God provided a way. That's how our God is. Into our lives, He always provides us a way. I would, I would like to give us two reasons why God often loves to bring us into a harder, or to harder situations. Number one, the first, because God wants us to give us the best. That I mentioned a while ago. Say, the best. The best. I need you. Say it louder. Say, the best. Yes. In any way, or what goes to come our way, God would like to give us, not, you know, the leftovers. He always would like to give us the best. I found this uh, as, a, as a quotation. I would like to mention them as part of our message this morning. The difficult, ro difficult roads lead to beautiful places. Are you with me, amen? Difficult roads lead to beautiful places. That is meaning if you go through difficulties in your life, beautiful things are waiting for you there up, amen? Or at the end, when it will be over, I guarantee you, beautiful things are waiting for you there, amen? amen. We praise the Lord for our mothers. You know how before they get, uh, how they born our baby, uh, how they born their babies, or how they born, how they born you, how they born us for our mothers. After nine months of conception, painful labor, labor is beyond explanation. Pain is beyond words. You, you cannot draw their faces. You know uh, everything. Everything you know uh, come come to the maximum day or in a moment of the time. Because of extreme, extreme pain. And you know what? When that is over, the mother and everyone in the family becomes very happy because of a new life being born in this world through the suffering of the mother. Amen? Amen. That is why when a blasphemy happens of a child, from a child to a mother, and not just to a mom, but of course to the parents, we children know and must reverence our parents. But you know, talking to the mother, there, there are corresponding, you know, uh, corresponding punishment coming from the Lord because of the awe of life uh, we children do have to our mothers. Are you with me? Amen? Amen. We give the Lord a clap of praise. <laughs> you know, all of the pains, all of the sufferings mother experienced a while for how many hours? Gone. Turned away. When the mother sees the baby, and you know, tears to fall from the eyes. Still can remember, you know, when Sister Dahlia uh, delivered Naz amongst the three, Naz uh, was the worst. <laughs> what I say, I mean, the pain Sister Dahlia would have to go through because uh, she gave birth to Naz when uh, she was in her prime. And uh, the doctor talked to me, Pastor, it's now almost. Two days, and uh, you decide now. 
Sister Dele is uh, in, in a high risk situation and the baby now, uh, what is this? Uh, already in distress because Sister Delia already on that time was in her labor almost two days. And the doctor told, told me, do not worry for the money, God shall provide. Because at that time for sure, actually I was, I was in anxiety. We have to subject your uh, your wife to a cesarean uh, procedure. I was helpless and I nodded and said yes. And there I, I could hear, you know, I was outside the delivery room. The cry of the, the sister Vicky and the rest was there, you know. And uh, I could hear. It was 12, uh, 12 o'clock something uh, in the evening, midnight. I could hear inside. You know, the cry of the baby, and I was called by the doctor later, he became a friend, uh, the pediatrics, his, his name is uh, Dr. Reyes, Dr. Reyes called my name, and showed, showed me Nas, and Nas weighed, you know, 8 pounds, and among the batch that were born on that day, he was the biggest because Nas at the time was really very stout. And he looks me really very Sister Delia, 90%. You know, the eyes and uh, the, the choppiness and everything. And she was unconscious at the time because she was sedated. She became conscious and you know, she was still weak and she was looking for the baby and she was given the chance to see the baby and when she saw the baby, tears just fell from her eyes because what she saw were her, was herself, you know, as like a mirror, as like she was looking herself to the mirror. You know, all, all of the difficulties, all of the pains, they are to be gone when the blessings come. Let me tell you why God would love to bring us to harder places, because there are best blessings awaiting for us at the end. Amen? Let's give Jesus a glove for us. And the second I believe, because He wants to strengthen our faith. Our faith only are shallow without difficulties. But faith are strong. Our faith is strong. Faith is real. Faith is genuine when there is hardship. Amen? Hallelujah. There are two more things I would like to discuss uh, this morning. I'd like, I'd like to say about our tears. Say the word. Tears. Come on. Tears. And pass somebody's shoulder and say... Your tears. In uh, Psalm chapter 56, verse 8, the Bible said, In the King James, Thou tellest my wanderings. And you know, those tears are not wasted, those tears are not in vain. I have counted them, my child. Hello, are you with me? Amen? You know, every tears that fall from our eyes, God noticed them. God noticed them. You know, we love to tell and retell the story about Abraham. You know, Abraham, for 25 years after he followed the Lord, he needed to wait God for the fulfillment of his promise. Really that long. I, I want us to say the word long. Because, you know, most of the time, we really do not wait long to the Lord. I mean, the fulfillment of His promise. But there are these exceptional answers of our prayers that we needed to wait and wait a little longer. <laughs> and such was the case of Abraham. Every time when his wife was being taunted, you know what is taunted? Uh, made fun of, mocked of, you know, by other neighbors because... In the Old Testament, when a mother cannot bear a child, he, uh, the I mean, the wife, the mother is a forsaken. That's that's how the belief in the past. So Sarah didn't have a child, so she would go to her husband and quarrel the husband. And you just imagine the tears of Abraham in those days. Twenty-five years, she would have to cry. She would have to sob. She would have, or rather, he would have to come to God and complain to God and lay before the Lord. Lord, where was your promise? Where, where your promise? Did, did you tell me? 
and as well was Sarah. But you know what? The tears paid off when the promise came. Amen. You know, tears that fall from our eyes, the Lord counting them, the Lord hiding them in His bottles. In every tear that falls from our eyes, there are corresponding blessings in them. Amen? That's why you and me, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we ought to continue, we ought to endure and not give up. Amen? Amen. We are losers, we are not quitters, we are winners, and we endure. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. And you know what? To encourage us this morning, remember that God's hands are always ready to wipe our tears away. Huh? I thought of, Lord, how is this? How do you wipe our tears in Revelation? Do you with an ordinary handkerchief? Or do you with a napkin something? The Lord came to me back and telling me, no, when I wipe your tears away, my son, I do not with a napkin, I do not with a handkerchief. I wipe your tears away with my own powerful and magnificent hand. The same hand that went to the dirt and formed Adam, you know, fearfully and wonderfully, those same mighty hands are the hands to wipe away the tears away. Oh, the same hands to wipe the tears away from our faces. Amen? Amen? Praise be to the living God. As somebody tells me once, somebody tells me once again, my tears, come on, my tears. My tears. And the second is witnesses. In uh, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 43, it says, It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. Brothers and sisters, God loves to render us weak. God wants to push us weak. God wants us uh, to go in, in through, in, into, uh, you know, trails, into winding trails, and we end to be, you know, uh, without capacity, to be without, uh, to be without ability, not because God wanted to laugh at us. You know, God wanted to make fun of us. How is that? Because in the kingdom of God, this is how things work. This is the law. Everything must be sown in witness. In order that at the later, when it grows, it will be powerful. Amen? You just imagine Jesus, the very Son of God. He was that living seed God the Father sowed in His world. You know the parable? The parable of the sower, Jesus the seed, and in John, the Gospel of John, uh, the Lord says, and unless a wheat of a corn falls to the ground and dies, it remains to be alone. But when it falls to the ground and dies, it will multiply to be hundreds and to be thousands. Are you with me? Amen? Jesus is the seed. You know, when Jesus was being dragged, when He was smitten, when He was spotted, when He was cursed, when He was nailed in the tree, you know, all we could see was a total witness. You know, soldiers even started to, you know, uh, like curse him and telling him, if you indeed are the Son of God, why do you allow yourself to be beaten? Can you not call some help? But Jesus remained there all silent. I mean, showing himself, rendering himself to be totally weak, to be helpless. Are you with me? Don't you know when we are in our weakest, when we have nothing, when we have no sources, when we feel like the world turned around from us, when we feel like alone, you actually are not. God is there. Though is a silent, silent companion at your side, waiting for the ripening of your situation. Because really, brothers and sisters, uh, it's not forever. I like us to say the word forever. forever. Uh, difficulties are not forever. In, uh, in every difficulty, there will, be a ripening, uh, there will be a ripening time. God would have to wait for the ripening time. When it's over, brothers and sisters, rewarding 
rewarding, rewarding time will have to come. You know what, brothers and sisters? I'd like us to say the word witness. Witness is corresponding to power. Now I just come to think, ladies and gentlemen, when Prophet Elijah was told by God to go to a place to look for a person, you know, for uh, the three and a half years. Are you still there? Amen? There was this three and a half years, no rain, and there was famine in the whole of the land. Imagine, three and a half years, there was no food. People were eating grasses. People were eating stones. To the extent mothers cooked their own babies just to survive. There really was a worse famine in the land. But God was responsible to spare his people, his servants, Elijah at the time. The Lord told him, Elijah, I want you to go to a small town called Sarephath. Well, Samaria was a bigger city than Sarephath, but God told him not to go to a metropolis, to Samaria, somehow to a small town. And instead to a rich family, to a rich and influential family, God told him, I want you to, uh, to go to this poor woman, to a widow. Hello, are you there? Amen? Amen? You know, there is a lesson that we will have to understand. You know, when we bring the word of God, when we get along with people, we must not choose or partial to who we get along. Are you with me? Amen? I'll not go to this person because she is poor. Oh, I'll not talk to this person because she doesn't look attractive or she, or he doesn't look pleasant. We must not choose people, amen? amen. When you shake hand, when we, you see the person, the hand of the person dirty, you shake hand. Anyway, it will just be for a while. When you part in ways, you know, you can just wash your hand. You know, you can, you can just use a soap or you can just use, you know, an alcohol. And that do not hurt. That cannot hurt, amen? What matters there is you establish a bridge to establish a relationship. Amen? Amen? Now, I cannot just, you know, think how in the world the prophet Elijah somehow could be sent to another place and another man, but God rather chose a poor widow. And you know what is the story following? There was that miracle, you know, for the prophet and as well for the woman, for the widow and for his son or for her son. But, but for the rest of the three and a half years as people dying all around, because of famine, because there was no food, there was no rain. The prophet, the woman, and the son was spared by God, were spared by God. Amen? Amen. Now let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, as I'm about to end. You know what? Your God and my God is not dead. Amen. Your God and my God is not asleep. Amen. Your God and my God is not on a trouble. Your God and my God is concerned of you and concerned of me. Every single day. Amen? Amen. And the Lord is well able. Amen? Amen? What I'm saying is, right this very morning, brothers and sisters, is always, always stand on your ground. Always, always, you know, declare the word of God. Uh, always declare the, the word of hope, the word of faith coming out from your mouth. That God always make a way. Amen? God, God always provide a situation. I'd like to close my sermon now in this. You know what? Uh, last week, I had all of the reasons to complain and to blame and to say it's, it's a bad day when I went to the wedding. Of all of the situations, you know, the uh, marriage contract of the couple, by the way, the trailer of their, uh, what is this? Of their video is now released. Am um, showed it because it it's, it was Am um, um, and uh, the rest of the group who took the shot. I tell you, really very beautiful. I saw myself there in in Kota in Thai with Pastor Roger. I, I tell you, God must be good. Very nice to him in the glory. But you don't know what happened. You know, on the eleventh hour, I was in a situation. Everybody says situation. situation. When you are in difficulty, you know you can change. The word description to what you go through. Change the episode of a problem, say situation. Come on. Yeah. When you're in your word, it says situation. <laughs> it's like a code that God understands. The typewriter. 
And uh, I, went, I went to this closer Barangay Holy Mansion in the mountain. There are no typewriters already. And I was in Lakewood. And the bar Barangay captain obviously doesn't know how to use computer. Told me, Pastor, we have computers here. There are no typewriters now in our time. Computer is in the past, or rather, typewriter is in the past. We have computer. He was offering me the computer, but I was looking for the typewriter. Wedding was to happen at 3.30. I was still, we needed to climb up to a mountain at 1.